Hi everyone, it's Louisa, content creator at Lightmap and it's our pleasure to be sharing this video today of a professional photographer, Phil Sills, telling us his photography story. Phil is a London-based advertising photographer and director with over 20 years in the business. Over the years, he has built an enviable reputation for creating high-end imagery for both liquid products and luxury audio technology brands. To bring these products to life in the photograph requires a total mastery of studio lighting techniques. Brands like Lucasade, Ribena, Highland Park Whiskey and Bowers & Wilkins are just some of the clients that have put their trust in Phil's ability to solve their visual problems. Mark Segesby, the co-founder of HDR Light Studio, had a great conversation with Phil via an online video call. So let's take a listen and get to know Phil ourselves. I hope you enjoy. Yeah, so morning, Phil. How are you doing? Morning, Mark. I'm doing very well, thank you very much. In this nice, very almost wintry grey morning we yeah, have here today. Yeah, but, the sun's not yeah. out. Yeah. So um, I've known you for, I don't know, it's probably over 10 years. But I don't really know you that well. What I do know is that you're a real. <laughs> no, I don't. But what? what well, a... Maybe you don't want to know me that well. <laughs> yeah. But I want to get to know you better today. Um, okay. So we met uh, probably about ten years or so ago, yes. and uh, through your photography. So I was yep. um, doing packaging stuff, and you did a whole load of pack shots and catalog shots for oh, box yeah. bags back in the day. So that's yes. how I found you. Um, mm -hmm. And then that was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. Yeah. But that put you on my radar as this okay. guy's a great photographer. Um, and then we came up with HDR Light Studio. And I would say probably every couple of years, I would ping you and say, hey, we're doing this stuff. It's about lighting, computer graphics. You might be interested as a photographer because I always kind of wanted to get your input. And then <laughs> 10 years later, we kind of got there in that your yeah. your you know cg's more on your radar than it's ever been and the time's just right and we've been starting to do these lighting sessions together so we've done one lighting session where basically i drive hdr light studio you are art directing me from a, a studio photography and all, I mean. using all your yeah. knowledge so yeah. um purpose of this interview is i know you're a great photographer but i want to find out more about you and your history and you, you okay. as a person and, and how yeah. you got into it all. Yeah. Um, and then I think the people who watch our lighting sessions, it'd be great for them to know more about you as well. So that, that's the whole Absolutely. purpose of us. Okay, having great. Well, look, I don't want to bore anyone, so I'll try and keep it really uh, succinct, okay? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so where should we start? I think, how did you become a photographer? That Your, your journey to becoming okay. a photographer, basically. Yeah, I mean, it was always something that, I wanted to do from when I was way back at school. Uh, I was a bit of an artist. I thought I was going to be an artist. Uh, I was a bit worried about actually what does that mean? What what do artists do? You know. Uh, and uh, while I was doing my A level art, um, the tutor introduced me to a dark room that nobody was using. Nobody even knew how to use, and said, "Hey, look, we've got this room here. You know, and it's yours if you want it." And I went. Really? That's amazing. Yeah. And so uh, without knowing anything at all, without having any tuition, I taught myself basics of photography, how to print, how to shoot film, how to mess around in the dark room, because that's what you did at the time. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then I just thought, I like this. And I then, when I had to start thinking seriously about what am I going to do for a career, it was like, I think I can make a career out of photography uh, because I can see it as a way of being able to supply service and get paid for it. And and yeah, so it all went from there. Excellent. And, and then, so you left school. What was the kind of journey into becoming a professional? That yeah, had, yeah, okay. So I then went to a, a lovely college in Blackpool, which at the time, and it still is pretty good, but at the time was one of the best. So yes. I was lucky to get in. Mm. They didn't think I was ready. They thought I should go off and have get some more experience in the world of photography and, and do some other things. Because right. I was quite young. And I said, no, re not really. I, this is what I want to do. Uh, and I showed them all my creative stuff. And, and I think they potentially saw that, OK, I've got some ideas here. How's it going to work? And um, yeah, they let me in. So I did three years of that. 
That was interesting. Three years in Blackpool. Most people go there for a weekend. <laughs> Stag weekends and I spent weekends. three years there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was great. It was good fun. Uh, and uh, it was the whole course was to drive you to understand what it would be like to be a photographer in London, in the, in the working in the commercial world. So right. even though, to be honest, you know, what you learn at university or college is never really going to be like the real world. It, it was the best that they, you know, they really were trying to channel us in there. So that's it. Mm -hmm. So then I went, came to London after, after uh, you know, the, the college uh, work and the course. And um, really started to assist photographers. Right. Uh, not anyone famous. Yeah. I wanted to. I went to some of the big ad boys at the time. Uh, but of course, you know, there's many, many years worth of experience needed before you get to work with any of them. So I started yeah. working with general photographers. Um, I worked with food photographers quite a lot, actually. Um, some guy who did a lot of hotels. Um, and uh, yeah, I just started working and they were all nice people. And I just enjoyed being around photographers, being around studios. I started to fall in love with studios, the whole idea of being in a studio yeah. This being a space that is totally under my control, that no one's going to tell me that I can't have something here, kind of, you know, music, uh, having fun with lights, cameras, yeah. you know, it was all great. It was just this whole kind of different experience. And I really kind of, you know, kind of fell in love with it. And, yeah. and I knew at that point, that's kind of what I wanted to do. I was very good at shooting objects and I enjoyed investing my time into lighting and experimenting with lighting because um, yes. I, I wasn't really taught how to light um, I picked up a few basic techniques from the guys I work with but it really was basic you know there's when it comes to it the the things I learned right on at the early days are are things I still use now yes. but obviously what I've done is to channel those you know sort of fundamental building blocks yeah. Uh, into into what I how I need to use them, and I think that's that's really what it's about. Okay, so you were so so you got all of the varied experience, then started yeah. kind of channeling more into the product side of things. Absolutely, falling in love with the studio, the control yeah. of all of that. Yes, um, and learnt on the job from all these different people. Yes, absolutely. Um, I met an agent very early on who, at the time, was. Uh, doing something with younger photographers. So it was actually a great opening for me to start working professionally as well. So yeah. I did a bit of both, did a bit of, uh, so I worked with my agent, we built up a portfolio. He really helped me with that, which was very important. Um, and then, you know, got to a point where I started to get a few jobs in. And yes. then those jobs eventually overtook the assisting work. I just, it was just a natural progression. Oh, okay, so you balance so you so you're doing a bit of assisting and then you do yeah. a bit of your own work and yeah. then just that balance changed until you effectively yes. branched out on your own. Yes. And got yeah. your got your own studio space or what? I, I, I had my own studio for a while, uh, at one crazy moment. Uh yeah. but uh really, you know, studios are very expensive places, a big, you know, yeah. ex big floor area and of yeah. course in London that's premium price. So yeah. very quickly uh uh, I discovered that it was really expensive to own a studio. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I've always been involved in studios. So I have always shared studios. I enjoy sharing studios. I enjoy, you know, the kind of the, mm. you know, chatting to other photographers um, and being being part of spa a space, yes. but not actually having to be responsible for it is a uh, Yeah, is a you're still independent. Yeah. You're not financially tied. To yeah. The, yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, no, I, I think... Uh, you know, with the ways that sort of, uh, photography is developed for me, um, it, it, it's it's amazing to think I'm I'm still in love with the studio. I still I still think it's a great space. I think still think it's a it's a you know it's just a really kind of relaxing place for me to go to because it's uh, mm. it's kind of my own domain. It is my world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just get in you the know? zone when you're lighting that shot. Yeah, just, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So I guess. Off. It's all about composition and lighting and then yes. just the technical skills of being able to operate the camera and know how all that's going to work. Mm -hmm. um, 
In terms of lighting then, I mean, yeah. was there any person in particular that you learned most off or was it just you picked up lots of different tips off lots of different people you know did you have a real main mentor early on no right <laughs> I, I would have so valued that honestly yeah. I would have I would yeah. have loved to have somebody who was you know who'd been through it uh, yeah. and who was willing to share their ideas <laughs> yeah. and their experience that would have been fantastic it, it wasn't available um, right there was an incredible amount of work to look at and there was an awful lot of uh, really great advertising photographers to to look up to. Mm. Uh, and I just looked at their work and I just looked at who was winning the awards and yeah. and what they were doing. And, you know, you just kind of take that on board and it just becomes part of your yeah. your, your your own learning. And I think even now today, seeing what I'm doing now, I, to me, it's all about, you know, you have to go through that journey. You have to learn yourself that's the only way if, if you right. you know you you it's great to have a leg up it's great to have be given help yeah, yeah. we all need yeah. help um yeah. but you still got to do it yourself you still have to make the mistakes you still have to yeah. uh, have successes and that's all part of the journey isn't it yeah. um yeah uh i mean i i must, must admit when i when i was you know right back in the early days i was really influenced i suppose in terms of my visual work by uh, sculptors, actually, they, they weren't photographers. Uh, I was mm. less interested in photography, more interested in uh, form and line and space. Uh, it was mm. always something I really liked, you know, Henry Moore, um, Barbara Hepworth, uh, Brancusi, mm. um, even a photographer called Bill Brandt, uh, who did some amazing black and white shots of nudes on a beach, but shot them in a way they looked like lumps of rock in very right. strange poses. And, and I was really taken by all of that. So it, yeah, I, I think I formed a lot of my kind of focus on heroic products and, and mm. shapes within, within the, the, the frame yes. through, through that kind of, you know, work. Yes. Um, and the photography side was kind of just my interpretation of that. So, yeah, so I, um, uh, That's interesting. Yeah. Cause yeah, it's kind so. of like the, the worship of the human form. And then mm. it's the worship of the the, the product, uh, you know, the yeah. actual looking at that object and going, how do I make this object look really beautiful? And and then how, yeah. like you said, the hero, making it the hero. Um, yeah. 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 I, I was always interested in that. I was always interested in the singular, simple uh, object, you know, and I, I think I made it my kind of mission in my early days to to deliberately choose the most mundane thing I could possibly get my hands on and yeah. try and photograph that in a way that I thought was interesting and said something about the, the object and not yeah. not to put it in the camera, put it in, sorry, put put it into the into the shot, yeah. put the camera on it and take a take a picture. That that was never to me that was never what photography was about. It was always about mm. exploring what element, what real part of this yeah. this object you know was what was interesting what was what what could i show other people that was yeah. going to make this object completely different in their eyes yeah. um and then the thing that did it apart from being very careful about composition and shape within the frame was lighting Light, right. lighting is everything you it's it is it is what we use as in in creating something visual you know that's mm. that's how we sculpt our images isn't it it's with yeah. light um, yes. And yes. So yeah, so I was always really keen on light, and I don't think I particularly learnt that from anywhere. Um, mm. It was just what developed out of, yeah. I guess, just an inherent interest I I had. Yeah. So back in the day, then you'd be doing like these Polaroid film job on the back of your camera, having <laughs> a quick look, see. So then everything yeah. goes digital. That must yes. have just made the whole process easier because you could try things out where before. Maybe you had to play it safer because you had to wait for everything to get developed and yeah. you had one day to do it, so you're not going to take any risks. So did digital help you a lot in your freedom of mm. experimenting? 
I think if you ask any photographer who's been in the business long enough, mm. you know, how they feel about the journey, I, I think the answer is going to be the same. Mm. Uh, I think as photographers, we feel the real art and the craft of what we did with film and cameras and the whole process of understanding mm. how to shoot Polaroid, how to go from something that was so a, an appalling version of what you're actually really going to get, persuade yes. an art director what it was going to look like yeah. and then show them that afterwards. I mean, that was a real, a real kind of, craft it, it, it really was and it was great fun yeah. and it was but it was a process that was deliberate it was controlled mm. and actually it was really slow uh and yes i suppose from a client perspective they were in the dark they had no idea what we were doing yeah. it was all smokes and mirrors mm. and, and i'm not saying that because it was it's a clever thing to say but it's because yeah. it really is you know they didn't know what to expect they, they, yes. they, they had a line drawing given to them from a creative Yes, and then they had to go. Okay, yeah, here's a budget. Go and produce it, and then come back with a, a, an image that went. Wow, look at that. Yeah. So that whole process is so different to what we now experience in 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 working life with uh, with with the in the world of digital. I think the tables have turned. Digital and digitization of image creation is great for clients. Yeah. Uh, and client involvement because. They can see exactly what's going on and they have a lot of knowledge now about what they, they expect. Yeah. Uh, from a point of view of the creator, uh, yeah, I think it's not it's not that great news because all of a sudden you, you've you lost the, the, the bit of mystical magic that you right. can create, uh, that you can add into the process, the unexpected, mm -hmm. because that's been removed. Um, certainly in the world of advertising now um, and, you know, marketing, uh, I think people have a very, very clear idea. The clients have a very clear idea about what they want. And yeah. they want, you know, and, and what they, the brief that they give you, you've got to just give back, you know, the perfect execution of that brief. Um, right. Which is different to creating an image and going, you know what, doesn't that look amazing? Oh, let's go with that, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very limited now. Um, the the perceptions of 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 my role i think my role as a, as, as a photographer is mm. far far reduced my input that i can kind of get into an image yeah. is a lot less now than it used to be hence the reason why i still love producing my own work when i do because right. that's that's the only time i really get to kind of express myself you know and have a play yeah. and enjoy myself and enjoy you know the the craft that that you know that I've been learning for for a very long time now. So that's that's yeah. that's a bit unexpected, actually. Your answer there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because I kind of <laughs> I, I I kind of would have imagined it'd be quite a rosy picture of it used to be all slow and we didn't quite know what we we're going to get, and then now we have instant feedback and I can try all these different things out, which means I can end up in going in these different directions and being even more creative. But actually. The people you are working with yeah. are now hyper aware of the process. Yes. And control more control freaks about it and getting involved yeah. more heavily as it's all going on because Much you more. they can come to a shoot instant to see on a computer next to, to them what you just yeah. shot. So yes. and then yes. almost take away your creative role a bit because that Absolutely. was in your hands. So I'm yeah. quite I'm a bit surprised about that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not a complaint, by yeah. the way. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just the change. The changes that happen inevitably in any industry, uh, going from film to digital, change completely. The you know the way mm. uh, people interact with images. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's. I mean, literally the last shoot that I've been on, uh, just just a couple of weeks ago. The um, yeah, it, it it was it was kind of really intense because we were quite literally almost trying to sign off and get, you know, uh, uh, clients understanding what we're doing whilst we were shooting it. Yeah. And then they were directly feeding back, you know, and, and I was then, you know, so yeah, so I am having to be more reactive to requests and, and mm. to other people's requests. So obviously that's a skill and that's the reason why in the professional world, you know, yeah. you have to understand what you're doing. You have to know instantly how to turn something around to make it look like something else. Yeah. So that you can deliver that that very specific request, um, okay. yeah. But I mean, I I'd love to speak to somebody who who thinks that 
the world is now it's a more back, crazy yeah, complex yeah. because of digital. I yeah. I think it could be for the you know the person who does it for fun. Yes. Or, I mean, how many times have you spoken to somebody that's oh yeah, I've got this, oh I've got my phone, I've taken these great pictures. Oh, yeah. Look at all these. And you're yeah. going, they're not bad actually. Yeah. yeah, you, yeah. Should, you should be a photographer. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, how many times have you heard that now? And, yeah. and, and I, I, I've got no problem with that. And I, I think people can take the most amazing advantage of the world of photography now and image mm. creation through various digital techniques. And that's, that's brilliant. Um, yeah. From a professional point of view, obviously, it's changed things completely. But you know mm. what? That's another story uh, <laughs> yeah. in terms of we don't want to go down that rabbit yeah. hole. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so uh, but yeah. So in terms of uh, lighting... How has, because I know um, professional product photographers take um, shots of individual light sources and they do a lot of compositing yeah. and bringing the image all together. Now, yes. previously on film, I can't imagine you were doing that because literally you were trying to get everything in one shot where now there's a heck of a lot more that you can do. So can you just explain yeah. how was the digital change your approach to when you like uh, something yeah well funny enough it it it's made that part of the process easier uh, but pre-digital we were still um shooting elements but yeah, we had right. to do it in a certain way with with uh, involving film so you, you heard the phrase multiple exposure you don't hear that anymore because it's not possible <laughs> oh, <laughs> in, right if you've got a phone you take a picture it, it's a single shot yeah uh when we were shooting film and being very crafty and clever about what we could do, we were still shooting multiple light sources, mm. controlling what the film was seeing, mm. but but basically doing it multiple times on the same sheet of film. Wow. So you would go through a whole process where you would understand all the different bits of light that you need mm. and then shoot those bits. Uh, on the same sheet of film. So everything, obviously you can't do that fashion. You can't, you know, if you're walking yes, around, you, yeah. you're, you're taking a shot of something moving, that's not possible. And that's still not possible in digital uh, yes. now. But if you had a locked off image, so, you know, me shooting something where I'm really crafting something to perfection, yeah. uh, that's not moving, I could take as many shots of it as I wanted. I even had an art director fall asleep on a sofa once because I was, because it took so long to shoot a sheet of film. I think it took about half an hour to shoot a sheet of film uh, because of all the different things that we were doing to create that one image. Um, so, but but we still do that now and we mm -hmm. just do it digitally, but now we'd shoot, we, we still capture the different elements, but of course yeah. now we can just layer it up in Photoshop yeah. and then yeah. create the image that way. So same same idea, yeah. just a different technique. That's and are you it. doing that live? It, so you, you take one, one layer, so to speak, and and get that into Photoshop, and then you yeah. do your next light, get it in and go, well, how are those two working together? Yes, absolutely. So uh, one of the key kind of ways that we can get more control over the way the image can look uh, as, as a final piece is to somehow break down the, the, the lighting. So you might, I might say, for instance, light a shot with two or three different lights, uh, a key light, um, a fill light, uh, and perhaps a little bit of light just catching an edge or something. Mm. Um, and then, so I'll set that up, I get all that working, and then I will look at what those individual lights are doing and say, well, how can I shoot this differently um, to potentially give me a different result? How do I get control over that highlight in isolation? How do I just view the shot just for the backlights? And, and what what help will that give me afterwards to perhaps enhance the image even more? So yeah, so I, I tend to try and break it down, deconstruct the image a bit in my head. Yeah. Look at what the what, look at what the lights are doing. Shoot what I can. So you you, you know you always got to have. I mean I've, I've 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 said this to the people on my on my course and on my forum. You know you've always mm. got to understand the result. If you don't yeah. understand the result that you want, you won't be able to go through this process. Um, so be very clear about what you want the final image to look like, but then try and give yourself some options so that in post production, which is now the you know the digital dark room, you yes, know that yeah. you, can then, you can then do something with it. Yeah. yeah. And how easily did you pick up the the digital, the, you know, the the computer side, the Photoshop, and the uh, all of that? 
I taught myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it got to the point when, uh, you know, you know, the only option was to go to a, a big retouching house and pay someone a lot of money to retouch an image. Yeah. And uh, as a as a younger photographer, that was like, oh, this is really expensive. I can't yeah. do this, you know. Yeah. But I, I see the re I see the need for it. And so, you know, when Photoshop was in its early days, and I was still on my my really old iMac with a rounded screen yeah. and the color on the back of it, all that. Yeah. Like, I was there <laughs> with a mouse trying to retouch. Yeah, I remember trying to retouch. I did. A, I retouched a car shot with a mouse. Yeah, <laughs> which is the most insane thing to do. Yeah, um, and I was mildly happy with the result. Uh, you know, it's quite funny. Uh, so yeah, taught myself all of that, uh, really, so that I knew how to I knew how to understand what Photoshop could do for me. So that mm. as I'm briefing somebody now, I understand what it is I'm asking them to do. Yes, so, yes. You know, to to be very, you know, to 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 want to. I've experienced this with various things in business. If you don't actually really know. Who, how how you know what you're asking someone to do for instance yes, yeah and you have no idea what the result is going to be coming back at you you don't know mm. how hard it's going to be how how do you judge that yeah. that process so to yeah. get an understanding of this other medium so that you can then react interact with it is yes. you know, was something i found invaluable uh with photoshop mm. and you know and now we are starting to you know i am starting to look at you know cg in the same way it is it is now something that I feel I need to understand a lot more so that I can mm. interact more with the, this wonderful virtual world that exists. <laughs> yes, yeah. Because it is so different to to what I do in terms of actual physical things. Mm. But actually, it's just, you know, the basic principles, I, I think, are probably still underlying. Oh, 100%. Um, because... Yeah. You know, it's a virtual camera. It's virtual yeah. lighting, but then at the end of the day, it's image making. And yes. Yes. Yeah. That the having that. What am I trying to achieve? Mm. And then um, getting the composition and the lighting. And yeah. often, people who do computer graphics are so involved in the modeling and the texturing and creating this perfect model. And then you get to the position of going, right, I, I want to make this thing, I want to make an image of this. And, you know, you've spent your entire career um, making things l look beautiful. And and yeah. like what you said about focusing on actually quite mundane, simple things and going, can I just take a shot of this and really make it into something? Um, yeah. You, you would, when you were talking, you mentioned about car, um, car photography. Yeah. Yes. Now, I know you have said to me in the past that really shaped a, a lot of your knowledge about lighting came from approaching car photography. Could, could you expand on that? That'd be a Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, because the car is such a big thing and you work in this massive space, everything is becomes big. And so actually it's much easier to see kind of what you're doing. So, so when you're looking at a car, what, I learned and I did talk to other car photographers. I remember being in a car studio, not having the faintest idea how to do something and yeah. having to knock on the door <laughs> of the next door. Go, can I have a word, please? Can I yeah. have a word? And the guy gave me a couple of tips. Um, yeah. But yeah, so car photography taught me how to shoot elements. So pre, pre car photography, I was, I was more inclined to try and shoot the whole thing. Um, in one go, yeah. uh, because that was, of course, the process of learning film. Um, although, yeah, we just touched on the fact that I did then do elements as yeah. well. But but when it came to cars, that's it. You didn't shoot a car in one go. Um, mm. it, it it just becomes this massive long process if you try and do that. Uh, and then what? So what happened in the car studio was that you had to very quickly learn how to how to uh, kind of de again deconstruct what it is that final result needs to be, what do you need to produce it? You've got to do the wheels. You've got to get that side. You've got to get your windows in. Um, and just think of it, it just helped to think of it in different pieces. So yeah. it kind of broke the big mountain down into into smaller chunks. Um, yeah. So it just, that process of, of shooting cars, and that's when I really started to work properly digitally as well. You mm. know, I, I shot, I uh, was shooting for Lexus. Mm. Uh, in Belgium for three months. I mean, it was the most mm. insane job 
Right. Uh, it was fantastic. Yeah. You know, three months. I went out there to, to shoot one brochure for two weeks, came back three months later. Oh, wow. Uh, meanwhile, my, my, my son was born. <laughs> that went <laughs> down well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so it was, re it was really, it was, it was great fun. Um, and I learned an awful lot uh, yeah. on, on basically three months of shooting cars probably broke the back of my, my brain in terms of understanding how to, how to just to, you know, not overly worry about, you know, the complexity of what a final image can be. Yeah. Uh, break it down, get, get, understand the elements, understand the different types of light you're going to need to like different parts of it. Yeah. And then just chunk through it and just get on with it. Cause you know that as long as you have an understanding how things are going to go together afterwards, it's, yeah. it's fine. You know? I mean, what, what intrigues me is you like the wheels, you like the windscreen, you make sure you got, you know, you, you, you're, you're collecting these elements yeah. that you know, I've covered all the bases that I can combine these in different ways. And then you're almost lighting it. You're almost lighting it when you're doing the post-production as in yeah. you're choosing and finessing and everything. But yeah. Yeah. how, how does it not look a dog's dinner in that, you know, you, you, you're brick. <laughs> it's, it must actually be quite hard because if you've got so many elements that you can bring together, actually yeah. dismissing so because the, I know when we did that lighting session together, you yes. you were trying, First one. yeah, you were trying to find simplicity. You were trying to find the perfect light to do, like a main light that's doing a big job. So yeah. when you're then collecting these elements, you, I guess you've still got to think about that big picture of this. Uh, these lights all still need to have a beauty to what they're doing to the car. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's. I, it yes. must be. I, I know. Exactly it's quite right. a complicated situation in that you're shooting elements that you know you can adjust in post, but they've still all got, got to have their own beauty because you yeah. can't just collect loads and then hope it'll all come together. No, nope. because it probably won't. Do you know what I mean? Nope. So, it would be like a mismatched jigsaw, won't it? Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so it's the same with. I I view it the same with any kind of approach to producing anything creatively now, uh, visual. Uh, which involves computers, you know, because we all do it, you know, you, no matter what, what it, no matter what, you know, no matter what the approach, whether it is, you know, is, is it from photography, is it from CG, is it, you know, the, the lighting concepts of, of, of knowing what this thing will look like, what your main light source is, what the main visual look of the shot is going to be, has to be really firmly set in your mind. So if you're looking at a 3D object that is is like a car, say mm. for instance, where you've got a roof, you've got a bonnet and you've got the side. Okay, you are gonna light them differently and independently of each other because that's just an easy way of going about trying to do it. You know, yeah. otherwise you have to have so much kit you drown in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> um, you just, you, you have to just pay attention to the fact that you've got to connect the dots. They're not going to live independently of each other. So the side of the car tonally has is got to wrap around to the bonnet. How's mm. that going to work? So you pay massive attention to the bit that's going to join the two up, and you make sure that 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 where you're going to move on to is going to work. So you have to think ahead. It's always yeah. just thinking ahead, going, yeah. Well, look, if I'm going to go wrap with this light around this object, and it's going to go down the side, what I want the side to look like. Oh, I want the side to look like that. So therefore, this has got to be this kind of area. And, you know, of course, it's great. Digital is fantastic. Everything can be nudged up, nudged down, colour shift, all yeah. those lovely things now, which, okay, that does make my job easier. Um, in that respect, you, you know, if you're really wrong, you're really wrong. And you end yeah. up completely building everything from scratch. And, of course, no one wants to do that. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is where, again, lighting control um sim yeah so so with lighting i i would like to always think that there's a simple answer to everything yeah uh and that might be just like well what's the main driving force behind this image mm. get that right first then you can add on the other little funny great little bits after that but 
But once you've got the big overriding idea already set, yes. as long as you don't forget that and continue that all the way through, no matter what else you do after that, it's all going to kind of fit together, yeah? Because yeah. you're looking at it and you're going, yeah, yeah, that works. And you know it doesn't. I mean, unless you're completely visually illiterate, <laughs> yeah, you, you know whether something is chalk or cheese, right? You know? Yeah. And if you're looking at something again, that's not going to go in. And I've I've been on jobs where I've been asked to do stuff, and it's like, well, how's that going to go together? Yeah. Oh yeah. So you, you just got to keep mm. got to keep the end result in mind, and, and this is very important. Um, yeah. Doesn't matter what, you know how you're doing it. So yeah, that's good advice. Yeah. Uh, how did you get into specialising in liquids and technology products? Where, how did that come about? Oh, that was that was a. Purely business decision. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, as a, as a, as a still life photographer, um, I got to a point, and you know, in my career when I actually wasn't too sure what that actually meant anymore. Uh, I was struggling to find reasons for shooting stuff. What what did I want to do? Mm. You know, I had my agent saying, "You got to, you know, you need more portfolio work." You know, what we're we doing? I'm going. Oh, I don't know what to shoot. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what, and I kind of lost my focus. I lost my the identity of, of what it was I was trying to do. Yes. Um, and I found that through the the principle of basically focusing on a specific area, a niche, mm. uh, that gave me focus back. That that was it. So, yeah. uh, so you know, sort of six, seven years ago when I really started getting into drinks, um, it, it, it was, I just recognise it as a, big enough area for me to get my teeth stuck into to, yeah. to make something of that it it had all the inherent beauty within it of the things that I really liked it was all about lighting yeah it, but it was technical as well it involved all the, the intricacies of how I used to shoot cars yeah. and I just felt that it was just a very natural progression for me um so yeah, yeah so I just started saying you know you know let, let's let's push that let's try and get good at that. Let's get to the point where kind of, I feel like, you know, it's something I could own more uh, yeah. rather than to sort of doing everything. Uh, and I know this is a constant creative battle in all, in, in with everyone, yeah. isn't it? In any create, any creative is going to go, do I specialize? Do I keep it broad? Um, I think only you can answer that. Um, you've got to look at your own, you've got to look at the market that you want to work in and you've got to look at, yeah. uh, you know, you look at yourself, what you want to do, what you're good at doing, because it's important to do stuff you're good at. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and then try and find a path that's going to take you to to you know to something that mm. is, you know, going to work for everyone. Um, and the te uh, the 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 kind of the more technology side of it, which which really started to develop when I was started working with various audio tech companies. Yeah. Um, again, just a natural progression from cars. It, so mm. so cars. What's the root of, of, I suppose, if I look at where I am now, Cars was a point where I, I, it just taught me so much that I could then progress down very specific kind of channels with, with you know, a certain approach that was going to work. Um, yeah. So, Excellent. Go. Excellent. We, I mentioned the HDR Light Studio and the CGI yes. stuff to you probably, yeah, you know, as I say, probably 10 years ago and yeah you know been talking to you about it probably every couple of years i mentioned about it yes um, i think a lot's changed in that the speed of computers has got a lot faster the yeah. interactivity um the quality you know i know yeah. right back then it's like well this image quality isn't going to replace photography so i think now um definitely for the past couple of years we, we're at the point where something can be CG. It could be a photograph. You won't know because um, a, a retouched photograph or a CG, they can look very similar. So, I mean, yes. from your point of view, how are you, what are your feelings about computer graphics now and, mm -hmm. and you as a photographer and how that all fits together? Yeah, okay. Big question that, Mark. <laughs> Big question. <laughs> Probably one that everyone's asking themselves. Uh, so, yeah, I, I mean... I suppose my role as, as an image, uh, as a photographer has changed. So I, I am now starting to discuss myself with people as an image creator. And that, that, that is a distinct difference because photography uh, and what it used to be seen at and how people used it has changed. 
so much more now is is as you say it's quick uh the work's produced almost digitally in 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 computers before even anyone has actually creatively had a go at something so there's so much work already embedded in in the workflow of computers that you know um nowadays i think clients are uh, are quite rightly not concerned now about whether something is cg whether it's video whether it's photography all they want is is to know they've got their content <laughs> you know yeah. they've got the right content for what they need to do or you know they've got the right assets um and so yeah i am very much much more inclined now and really very interested in you know how how the how the lines are now blurred between photography and and cg um because quite rightly so and i i've you know i've i've felt the impact of cg over the last few years and it's and there's always been reasons why something has to has gone cg it's very complicated you don't have anything to shoot maybe you know someone yeah. wants to create something and i actually physically cannot shoot it because it doesn't exist so yeah. i i personally think we as as photographers should be absolutely embracing all that cg has to offer because i i think we can actually help each other you know um there are limitations in shooting stuff photographically in the studio that don't exist in the virtual world that that was mind-blowing start mm. to learn about oh i can put a light there but i don't have to show you the reflection yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> yay you know that's just yeah. amazing now of course the challenge is how to make something generated in the computer feel organic feel real yeah. have imperfections now i know that techniques and stuff's out there already yeah i'm interested to see how how good that is now because uh certainly i've seen it affects the imagery that i need to create so yeah i i i totally suspect that's the same from on the cg side how you know how do images to look real yeah how, how do they look real anymore you know so yeah and i, th and I think for a certain type of cg work it is all about replicating photography. Uh, I know a lot of our customers, that's what it's about. I know right. that that blurring the line so you just yeah. can't tell. And there's lots of techniques for doing it in terms of replicating how the lens is, is reacting yeah. to light, um, the vignetting, the, the, the depth of field and proper bokeh, and all, all of those kind of things. And even just the idea that the camera's moved a bit, you know, and it's kind of, yeah, it not being too perfect. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, it's it's a, it's a it's a real challenge not to be perfect. I must admit. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I think we all, you know, I think the yeah, every creative wants to reach the perfection in an image, um, but actually that's that's impossible, right? <laughs> There's no yeah. such thing as perfection. Yep, it's something that I've always strived for, um, and I suspect most people do. Um, yeah. I guess with things like the drinks and the technology stuff, there's always the need for those perfect product shots isn't that because that is what people yeah. that yes there's the more in context lifestyle yeah but there's still always going to be the new iphone the new birds yeah, and Wilkins, absolutely. You know, that, that 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 perfection is what people are paying their money for isn't it so yes when they um, buy them. I, yeah i to totally agree um i think from a point of advertising uh clients and brands need something more real uh which which is a challenge for everyone from a point of view of still having that product shot that's got to go on every single website it's got to go and you know it, on every, you know it, it's got to be sort of foremost people need to understand what they're actually buying yeah 100 that needs to be there and you know i think that's where cg obviously can, mm. can it, it will play a massive role in supplying the majority of that yeah. of that uh of that of that content because you know i i suspect that we are in this point of time now where it's probably more cost effective for a client to to build and invest in 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 CG models uh, and like that, yes. then it, it, you get a photographer to go back and reshoot, and reshoot, and yeah. reshoot. Hey, yeah. it's been really good talking to you. Uh, and you, I've got, got to know you a bit better, Phil. Uh, and I still like you. I still like you. We'll we'll, we'll still keep doing this. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, no. brilliant. Well, look, no, I've, I've really enjoyed it. So, uh, and, uh, and I'm thoroughly looking forward to our next session. I want, well. uh, yeah, I just want to get onto the next lighting yeah. session yeah, and get the, that made. The bar is set high now. You do know that, don't you? <laughs> yeah, we, we better come up with a good on this next one, yeah. <laughs> we we so. really need to do something good next yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. So, that's great. Yeah, uh, thanks for your time today, Phil. And, uh, and you, we'll yours. see you on the next session. Yeah. All right. See you all soon. Cheers. See you then. Bye. See bye. You. bye, bye.